it never has felt like it was an end-all be-all. I never felt like, okay, we're married now, so that means we'll be together forever, or we're divorced now, so that means we have no relationship. My name is Connor. And I'm Brittany. Brittany, what are your thoughts on marriage? Well, Connor, I'm glad you asked because <laughs> today I was thinking of filming a video on That's such a good idea. That topic. That's a coincidence because I've just set up this video camera and press record. Oh, really? It's funny that we find ourselves side by side. Here we are. So we've gotten a lot of questions. What are our thoughts on marriage? That sounds fun. Yeah, it sounds great. I just asked Connor before this video, like, <clears throat> do you want to chat about anything first? And she's mm -hmm. like, okay. We know our thoughts on marriage. There you go. I feel like we can talk about this all the time. It's a great. I'm, I'm glad that people are asking that. Uh, it really makes sense. I think we've gotten probably a dozen questions about it at this point. A fun fact, intro fact to mention maybe that we both have been married before. Yes. Yeah, so we have the inside scoop. Yeah. From our experience. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I think as always, this is going to be our experiences and what we've learned from that. And it's fun to be asked that and also feels good to to say that everybody's experience is unique and different and your thoughts on marriage are super important and the most important thing for you to be considering, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, and I get the impression that maybe some people think we have like a strong opinion of, about marriage. Mm. And um, I don't really feel that way for myself. I feel like I, I have a, a good understanding of marriage and I don't have like a, a a strong opinion as as in like you should do this or you shouldn't do that or whatever. I really feel like just like Brittany said, like as always, whatever is good for you is so good for us. I think it's been interesting to notice for me the way my feelings about marriage have changed over time. Mm. I definitely think growing up I was like, oh, I'm not gonna do that, and if I do it, it's gonna be totally different. I'm just mm. gonna like have this potluck, and I'm not gonna have a weird big wedding, and kind of always feeling very like I didn't want that yeah. and then I think it changed a little bit to like oh I'd do that I do that for this reason I'm like okay I've done it and then afterwards like no and then sort of like <laughs> meh <And laughs> still like the the yeah like the strong opinion never held its grasp for very long if at all right and I, I've noticed that with a lot of themes mm. in my life yeah 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 oh, I like that yeah yeah, that's funny you mentioned that. I don't think I really had much of a, a conscious opinion about marriage when I was young. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't think too much about it. I just kind of assumed that I would get married at some point. And I met my the person that I married, uh, my my now ex-wife, and a lot of other things. But for the purposes of this video, it's a good label. When I was 16, and I remember at some point in my early 20s feeling like I want to get married because I want to feel like. I've I've kind of locked this down in a sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that that was an interesting feeling. I remember the feeling in my body, uh, feeling like it came from me from a place of fear. Yeah, and really wanting to feel like I want to I want to know that this is forever and that I don't have to fear it. And there was some understanding that if we got married, that that meant that this was forever. Mm. And uh, so that so that's interesting. And then of course going through a divorce. I didn't feel against marriage or anything like that. I just felt like, I don't know if I'm gonna do that again. Mm. And I didn't feel super adamant about not doing it. I just remember feeling like, mm. and then moving into a place where it, make, it could make practical sense, legally speaking. And also the things that I associated with it around connection and partnership and those kind of things. That's something that I found a way to develop on my own without needing to use those precepts. I love that. Thanks for letting me share for so long. I love, and I know I loved every moment of it. I felt very engrossed. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting that you say this about these precepts. I was just thinking about laws mm -hmm. and, you know, marriage is like a binding contract. Right, it's a contract. The law. And my dad growing up always taught me that the only laws that are true are the laws of nature. And I remember really feeling that and noticing 
in my life there's been a lot of divorce like mm. um, all my friends parents pretty much my parents etc and now growing up my sisters and I have all been divorced and I've noticed a difference with people talking to people who have been around a lot of marriage and marriages that have stayed together and just I think it's really interesting how we learn and can mimic certain things that we see mm. and I what I always gained was this great sense of freedom and independence and that was always very much a part of my upbringing it was like really do it for you be there for you mm. and and this thing of uniting my life with somebody else I felt like if I was gonna do it I had to have a really good reason and what the reason I chose to get married was a, for a lot of reasons to use it to my advantage as a legal contract because the person who I was sharing a life with at the time was from another country and it, we had just been doing a lot of work with visa paperwork for so long and finally it became like gosh it would be so much easier to coexist if we were legally married and that really served us mm. it served us right up through helping him get his citizenship and so I think in a way it's like awesome I'm so grateful that that system existed because we really wanted to share life together and he really wanted to yeah, it just, it just made a lot of sense for us and I still feel like it was the best decision ever. And then there's this interesting thing where I stayed married for a while after that because for me it was like, yeah, why get divorced? Like it didn't make sense. So I think my experience with marriage has been really different than a yeah. lot of people's. And now we're not married any longer and I feel like, okay. And, and none of that really, like in a sense, yes, it has impacted my relationship with him, but Hmm. It never has felt like it was an end-all be-all. I never felt like, okay, we're married now, so that means we'll be together forever, or we're divorced now, so that means we have no relationship. It's just been something that I really enjoyed using to our advantage. Yeah, I love that. It makes so much sense to me. Yeah, and, and I think what comes to mind around this subject is that we can utilize things that are already in place to benefit us and empower ourselves with these tools that are already in place. And I think what comes to mind around around this is like just not being um, a victim to this kind of stuff or seeing ourselves as a victim to this kind of stuff or being unconscious about it, mm -hmm. but rather being intentional with, with these tools that already exist. So marriage is a cool tool for a lot of different reasons. And, uh, and one of those reasons could be that for you, it feels like you're able to say, I love you forever in this really special certain way that you want to. And you can use the tool of marriage. It's already built up to do that, but you don't have to. And you can create your own tool or your own type of marriage or your own type of connection or partnership in a way that really feels right and genuine to you. And also there's nothing wrong with using the marriage one. There's also some real beautiful things about the, the contract itself that might interest you. And I think that's a really powerful thing to be, to be conscious of, you know, that you can use marriage, the tool of marriage to, uh, to do something like, like you did, you know, where of course you were in love and all these other things, but, but you were able to, to help your partner at the time, you know, gain citizenship to another country. That's pretty powerful stuff. Um, there's also tax reasons that you might want to do it. You might want to consider it. And I think, yeah, like all these things in life, you know, these are, we, we want to encourage freedom and consciousness and that the practices that we're putting into place are coming from a mindful, um, a mindful conscious place and not just like, well, got to get married, got to do it. For sure, I noticed when I did leave that relationship and was very much like, ugh, marriage mm. kind of feeling, I noticed that what I was really feeling was a desire to be super intentional and feel like I was waking up every day and saying, I'm choosing my life. I'm choosing the people that I'm spending my time with. Yeah, right. And I think that sometimes in marriage that can be lost and I feel like it doesn't have to be. And I think that's what we're saying in this video. But I noticed that that's something that has stuck with me is I love mm. waking up every day and being able to say, I'm really choosing this for my life today. And for in our partnership to always feel like we really get to choose every day the kind of time we wanna to spend together mm. and when we wanna spend time with other people as well. Yeah. 
I think that we've been to some pretty awesome weddings together and really enjoyed our time uh, at these weddings. And I've also seen some, some people who are married live really happy lives. And I think my parents are an example yeah, of that, you know, like too. they're doing a really great job in their partnership and, and they're married. But I, I feel like, you know, you don't have to be married in order to have a lifelong happy partnership and, and vice versa. Um, yeah, like, like marriage can just be whatever you, you want it to be. And also keep in mind that there's some contractual obligations, legally speaking, that you're entering into. You know, I think a question that people might be wondering is if we are interested mm. in ever having marriage be a part of our lives in the future, <laughs> like together or on our own. And yeah, I guess I'm curious about your response to that. Mm. Yeah, I don't feel that like a uh, connection with marriage as something I need to feel emotionally stable mm. or like it means then that. I can feel like a part of me can feel relaxed and, and we're all set. Yeah. Um, but I can definitely see how there might be a time when it could benefit us legally. You know, whether uh, it's something around our children or our property or our taxes, whatever. If that came up, I'm so down for it. Um, I'm also really down with the idea of celebrating our love publicly which i think oh, we do a lot cool. of but yeah. you know like having this kind of dedicated party and something like uh hey let's celebrate this that's so fun that that's sounds cool. really fun but yeah i definitely I definitely made a, a different connection between like you know how people get really nervous when they're about to get married because it means so much to them right and i feel like i i love that feeling you know that nervous feeling and that like this is a big deal and i think i've found different ways to experience that with you yeah what about you i feel like it's just like a funny fun thing to consider sometimes it's like oh my god imagine if we got married or something i've got the suit for it now yeah now you have the suit but no, no, that doesn't sound fun. Like, no, I'm not interested in getting married. The party could the party. be fun. I, when my partner and I got married, we actually did it at City Hall, but then a year later we celebrated and I literally spent nothing on it. We did a potluck wedding party and people told me it was the best time they'd ever had. Mm. And my brother pretended to marry us. He he made this little speech and even said, I have absolutely no power invested in me and <laughs> I now pronounce you as a... I didn't know that It part. was awesome. That's really fun. And it was just, it, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> celebrating life, celebrating love in general is always yeah. fun. As of now, I don't feel like there's any reason I would get married in the future, but mm. I feel super open to that changing. And I think a lot of the reasons that you mentioned could like be beneficial at some point. But yeah. I feel so in love with you and being here with you today. And I really want to have a future with you. And that feels super real in my heart. Mm. And to get to connect with you around that every day and to celebrate it in ways like making these videos and running festivals with you and having a child with you and just having a future together, that's that's how I feel like I'm celebrating that and, mm. and really embracing it and choosing it. Same. Thanks for asking your questions. Feel free to ask us anything else. And I think- Send us more. Yeah, send us, send us more. You can post those in the comments or wherever it makes sense for you. Uh, we love making video kind of responses to questions that we see out there, so. Or if you want to ask us questions in person, we have a ton of events that we're either hosting or presenting at right. throughout the year. So stay tuned, we'll throw up the events coming up at the end screen, yeah. the end of the end screen. You can also get behind the scenes with us on Patreon and you can check that out in the description box. Yeah, and this upcoming month in March, we're going to be launching a badass membership site with even more exclusive videos if you want to get behind the scenes with us. It's gonna be a little crazy. It's gonna be amazing. We're super excited about it. So please check that out. Much love to you guys. Okay. Mwah. Bye. Bye.